Greetings to all of you and God bless you today. Hope everybody's doing well. Folks, I'm going to keep saying it every time I come on here. Jesus is coming and Jesus is coming one day very, very, very soon. Folks, it couldn't be any more clear to me that we are on the cusp of the rapture of the church and the commencement of the seven-year tribulation period. One of the top reasons I believe this beyond a shadow of a doubt is we are living as it was in the days of Noah and as it was in the days of Lot. In the book of Luke, chapter 17, verses 26 to 30, the Lord Jesus Christ says the following, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. As we look at both the days of Noah and Lot, it is imperative that we fully grasp the obvious parallels between those days and the days in which we live today. Scripture has provided signs of the last days by means of world conditions that will crescendo up to and after the rapture of every born-again believer. They will worsen through the seven-year tribulation period and will end at his glorious second coming. By linking the conditions of both the days of Noah and Lot, Jesus himself reveals that violence, wickedness, sexual depravity, and homosexuality will not simply be in the world, but will fill the world all at one time in the days leading up to his return. Those conditions are here and building rapidly. First, let's talk about the days of Noah. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, we read the following, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And then when you go to Genesis chapter 6, verses 11 to 12, we read the following, The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Today, because man has turned from God, hatred is fueling hearts, resulting in bombings and shootings in schools, theaters, malls, the workplace, and public events. An atmosphere of lawlessness is emerging as law enforcement is under attack. Tension between races is explosive. Crime is on the rise, and murder statistics are sharply increasing. Across the globe, savagery and bloodshed are escalating. Homosexuality is legalized. The transgender lifestyle is encouraged and awarded. Fornication is excused. The murderous act of abortion is readily accepted. The entertainment media glorifies the dark and vulgar themes of violence and sexual depravity, while the voice of true Christianity is being silenced. But there is more. Next, let's go to the days of Lot. In the book of Jude, when you go down to verse 7, we read the following. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, in the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Although opposition to homosexuality rankles many, God's word distinctly describes homosexuality as an abomination unto God. In fact, in the book of Romans chapter 1, verse 27, the Apostle Paul records the following, And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. In the book of Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22, we read the following, Thou shalt not lie with mankind, as with womankind, it is abomination. The United States of America was the 21st country to legalize same-sex marriage, and that number has skyrocketed since. The world is repeating the evils of Lot's days. It reminds me of what's recorded in the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. 
The amazing thing is, despite the fact that violence, sexual immorality, and wickedness have filled this earth just as it was in the days of Noah and Lot, people are still going on living in a state of normalcy, buying, selling, marrying, etc. And that's exactly what it's supposed to be like at the time of Jesus' return. I mean, this is incredible, guys. We're here and we're here now. Let me read this to you again. Luke chapter 17, verses 26 to 30. The Lord Jesus Christ says the following, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. We already talked about that. We're living as it was in the days of Noah. Let's continue. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered in the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. What are people doing today? Besides the craziness, the wickedness, the immorality, that's exactly what's happening. People are going on just like normal. They're eating, they're drinking, they're marrying, given in marriage, exactly like it says here. Let's continue, verse 28. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot. And again, we are living as it was in the days of Lot, folks. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. We're there, guys, and we're there right now. Sudden destruction is coming, just as revealed in Scripture, as it was in the days of Noah and as it was in the days of Lot. And all I can tell you, if you're watching this video right now and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around the world right now at everything occurring and look at what your Bible says. You'll see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back one day very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ and him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you you can be saved right here, right now, as you're watching this video. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. What do you have to do to be saved? The gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, the sin debt that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross at Calvary, so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So you're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. That's the gospel of your salvation. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all miss the mark. We all fall short of the glory of God and our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down he would be born of a virgin. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. He was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross at Calvary. Again, the sin that, that you could never pay on your own. Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real, literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. Eternal torment, eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell. And I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven and the only name that can save you. I am begging you. I am imploring you to get saved right now. Put your faith and your trust in the blood of Jesus right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it. Jesus is coming and he's coming one day very, very, very soon. Keep looking up. Keep watching with me. And God bless you all.